My gosh. Well, it is a great, gloomy, rainy, yuck day here in the end times and doomsday trailer. Starting to feel like winter finally here on. It is a gloomy Thursday morning, December 28th, 2023. So anyway, uh, this, it's not a rant, but the, the, this video that I'm making, I, I'm making this video for uh, Dulcinea, uh, who we were emailing back and forth last night and I made probably a serious blunder by recommending that she check out <clears throat> this series of books. Everyone thinks it's three books but it is a series of four books that were written uh, mostly back in the 1990s called The Handbook for the New Paradigm series. It was a trilogy uh, back in, written back in the 1990s with the follow-up book that's never talked about, but we're gonna talk about it here because it was the most important of the four books. Uh, the Handbook for the New Paradigm series. So I'm just gonna give a rambling uh, introduction to this series of books uh, for anyone who has never, such as Dulcinea, who has never heard of this, these books, or for anyone who has, just to see if they uh, agree with my summation. So, <clears throat> just to let you know, I have read every word of this series of books three times through, cover to cover, which, just like with uh, Carlos Castaneda, you need to start with word one from the first book and go to the last word, not the last word of the third book, the last word of the fourth book that you will not ever hear talked about because nobody wants to hear about the fourth book. But first we're going to talk about the famous series from the 1990s. So I <clears throat> was uh, led to these books by my, uh, my, my best friend on, on the planet, this friend of mine in Austin, Texas, who I've mentioned, uh, you, you, you know, who has turned into a, a Trump supporter, which I'm going to talk about a little bit somewhere in this rambling video because the handbook for the new paradigm is part of the reason she is a Trump tard. I hope she never hears this video. So she is the one uh, who, who led me to this series uh, back in uh, 2007, uh, when I was just, you know, pulling my head out of my ass and questioning everything about my life, and she thought it might serve my best interest to uh, to to check out this book. So what I'm going to do, uh. Before I get in, well, okay, should I read you the only passage that I'm going to read in this, or should I, I'm going to wait a minute to read this, uh, this passage. So anyway, this series of books uh, <laughs> was one of the many, many strange little rabbit holes I fell into on my own personal spiritual, whether it's evolution or devolution, I, I, I guess uh, <laughs> is up to, to you guys to decide. Part of the reason that I am sitting in this trailer today instead of a beautiful home in South Austin, Texas, uh, no doubt, but the series of books was ostensibly written by this 
absolute disgusting right-wing scumbag by the name of George Green. Uh, I, I, I can't remember I, I, exactly what George Green's background was. You can find YouTubes about this guy. There, there is a, an entire subculture built around this series of books that still clings on to, to today, although I don't think it has anything to do with, with the group, you know, the original group of, uh, I, I won't go quite as far as calling readers of these books that they were in a cult. But anyway, this, this slime bag named George Green, he was a very successful some sort of businessman. I don't know. It was insurance or real estate or, or something, but uh, he, he had the, the. He was clearly a very successful uh, middle-aged businessman who, out of nowhere, claims <clears throat> that he got this download of information from some space aliens. Uh, some people claim uh, the, the space aliens were the infamous Pleiadians. What happened? Why is this? Ah, shit. Don't tell me that uh, this outlet is out again. Uh, it, 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 anyway, there, there's some <clears throat> you know, argument within the group whether uh, this was downloaded from the, quote, Pleiadians. And then, then there's other factions say that it was actually George's wife who received the, this channeled download uh, information. Then there is this theory, and I don't rule it out, that this was the material uh, that Billy Meyer, uh, any UFO space alien buff knows who the hell Billy Meyer, was claiming that a lot of his material was somehow stolen. And, and so the, the one faction is claiming that this is actually the Billy Meyer material that this slime bag George Green stole and, and, and put out here in, in this series of books. But, but whatever the case, <clears throat> when, when you see this guy George Green and, and read his, his bio, it, it, it makes absolutely no sense that this dude would have come up w w with these books. It, 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 it completely defies all logic that this slime, he's kind of like a Donald Trump wannabe, okay? This is how gross the guy is. This would be like Donald Trump uh, channeling information from benevolent space aliens, but, but anyway, that is what George Green claims in the middle of his successful business career, these space aliens uh, invaded his brain and, and sent him this message and told him to put it out there and he was just following the direction of these benevolent space aliens uh, out apparently to save the planet and the handbook for the new paradigm series is 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 what you got uh, out out of it. So I'm going to veer off and try not to get too bogged down in, into this little side rant. But I just want Dulcinea. I, I just, darling, I want you to understand because maybe you still don't understand uh, a, 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 my opinion on the 
very concept of benevolent space aliens either coming to save humanity or the planet, much less benevolent space aliens from the Pleiades or wherever the fuck come in here uh, to, you can't save humanity and the planet, okay? Humanity is the biggest threat to the planet. If any space alien wants to save this planet, the first thing they're going to do is come down here and kill every fucking human on the planet. Okay? Uh, any benevolent space alien, that is the first order of the day is to make planet Earth a human exclusion zone. There, there is absolutely zero reason that any space alien uh, would want to save humanity. The, the very idea that some fucking space alien wants to save us evil motherfuckers is absolutely preposterous. It, it, it is the most egotistical, anthropocentric uh, bullshit uh, I have heard since the, these, the, these goddamn Christians claiming uh, that God was made in the image of humans. Okay? There, there is no reason that any fucking space alien wants to save humans. Uh, and uh, I see no reason what is in it for a space alien to save planet Earth. If they come here, they're going to come here with the same agenda that humans have for this planet, which is to destroy it. There is no such thing as a fucking benevolent space alien. Okay? If there is such thing as a space alien, they sure as shit aren't benevolent towards humans or this planet. I just wanted to, to make that clear from the get-go that, uh, but when I was first reading this, I had not figured this out yet. So I tried to open my mind just wide enough to keep my brain from falling out and saying, oh, okay, I, I'm going to go with this. This was some benevolent space aliens bringing us this uh, message. So anyway, when I went down to Peru in uh, the spring and summer of 2009, I was very much in the middle of this. My, my book, Peruvian Plunge, which you can find me reading the whole damn thing here, uh, was, was me putting into practice what I had learned from the handbook for the new paradigm. It was my real life interpretation of and following the direction of the handbook for the new paradigm. Uh, and, and, and what happened to me down there in Peru, going down there with the intention of putting what I learned from the handbook of the new paradigm into practice and the absolute comedy of errors that ensued. So uh, this is the only, the only passage I, uh, I am going to read this was the very first opening to my book, Peruvian Plunge. This is a passage from the book, Becoming, which is actually book three of the handbook for the New Paradigm series. <clears throat> Quoting George Green or the Pleiadians, take your pick, quote. 
the hope, the hope is that the frustrations of enough of humanity have reached a great enough degree to begin to accept the possibility that virtually everything they have been taught to understand is inaccurate. The most important new understanding to be accepted is that without personal responsibility to change each person's consciousness with regard to understanding who and what each one of us is, this situation will not change. The whole of the planetary belief system will change only as its individual members change until a critical mathematical quotient is reached. How long this takes will depend on the spread of this understanding throughout the total groups that are now on this planet. It is the responsibility of those who come into the understanding of this information to disseminate it. Then and only then will the future change. And so, uh, so who he is talking to, the, the, the people disseminating the, this information, and, and I certainly considered myself one of them. Uh, I loved it. One term he used for us was tellers of the awful tale. Uh, basically, doomers. Uh, that, that, that you have to understand how fucked we are. And, and this was back in the 1990s. Uh, uh, how, how fucked this planet was back in the 1990s. And uh, before you can do anything, you need to understand how fucked we are and get that message out before you can start recommending any ways to, to do anything about it. Uh, so I was one of the tellers of the awful tale. I, I considered myself arrogantly enough to be one of the ground crew, which we'll uh, talk about uh, in a minute. So as you probably gathered <coughs> from that one passage, this book, whoever wrote it, is horribly written. It, it is absolute agony to wade through the awful writing, whether it was George Green or, or Mork the Space Alien, uh, the writing is absolutely awful. These goddamn space aliens needed a copy editor, but George said, this is the way they told me to write it down. So, make no mistake about it, 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 it is goddamn hard reading just to get through the awful writing. So anyway, I... Uh, went online last night and you can uh, you can order all of these books for cheap off of uh, Amazon there's free downloads you can go on and and put free download for handbook for the new paradigm and just read it right off your computer so this is what the uh, that goodreads goodreads.com has to say about Handbook for the New Paradigm, uh, they call George Green the editor and benevolent beings the author. Uh, it gets a four-star rating. There's 75 ratings and 18 reviews of the book here on Good 
Goodreads.com. So this is how Goodreads.com uh, defines the handbook for the new paradigm. <clears throat> the messages contained in this handbook are intended to lift mankind from the entrapment of the victim consciousness that keeps the level of experience ensnared in fear and frustration. Humanity was intended to live not in luxury, but in abundance. The information found between these covers will lead all that read and reread with an open mind to the discovery of the truth of who and what they truly are. The end of the search for these answers is provided at last in clarity and conciseness. Uh, so anyway, I, uh, I, I love these, so I guess there were 75 ratings, 38 gave it 5 stars, 22 people gave it 4 stars, 4 people gave it 3, 3 people gave it 2, and 8 people gave it 1. Uh, I'm just going to read a 5 star review and a one-star review. So this is Stephen's five-star review. <clears throat> this little book is unassuming from the cover, but once you open it and begin reading, you are on the journey of a lifetime. It contains what I consider some of the most important things I have ever learned about life and the big picture. I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, the content of the books truly is beyond price. Read it and see for yourself. And that <laughs> That five-star review is followed by this review, which I absolutely love. This, this review <laughs> was from Ron. Take it away, Ron. And, and, and I agree with the five-star review, and I wholeheartedly also agree with Ron's review. <clears throat> this book was given to me with absolute sincerity by an insane person, <laughs> by an insane person at work. He insisted that it would change my life and explain why we are all here or some such. Turns out the book was just as crazy and stupid as he was. This book is full of nonsensical, raving bullshit. So, I guess, if that is your thing, you'll love it! <laughs> oh, God. And, uh, so anyway, we will see what, uh, what Dulcinea, whether she, uh, she gives a... <laughs> <laughs> a, 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 a one star or a five star. I give it both, but uh, I just want to talk two other, mention two other things uh, about this unless the battery runs out. Okay, the main thing I want to talk about uh, for, for both Dulcinea and anyone listening to this who might have read these three books back in the 1980s and did not or does not understand that there was a fourth book that came out, I think maybe when I was down there in Peru, sometime in the early 2000s, uh, 
uh, although you will never, it, you go on Amazon.com, all of these websites, you will find that it described that this was a three book trilogy that ended with the end of Becoming. That is unadulterated horseshit, although you cannot find it and all of these little cult members, the, the, these little limp dick bliss ninnies uh, who were into this uh, shit, including me back in 2008, I was a limp dick bliss ninny, <clears throat> uh, refused to admit there is a fourth book and it's title is either Message to the Ground Crew or Message for the Ground Crew. It is 37 pages long. The whole book is 37 pages long, takes about an hour to read, and what it explains about 10 years after the last book in the trilogy was mentioned uh, that nobody wanted to hear. Uh, was, you know, talking to the ground crew, people like me, that we are fucked. That this, that this mythical window of opportunity to reach this critical mass of consciousness on planet Earth is slammed shut. It never happened. It never was going to happen. Uh, and despite George Green and the Pleiadians uh, and the ground crew's hard work and best intentions, it was a monumental failure. Everything in the three books did not happen. The window of opportunity to save this planet slammed shut forever in the early 2000s. We are fucked. We're fucked. And just uh, head for the fucking hills and enjoy it while you still can because as the Leonard Cohen song, Everybody Knows, said, everybody knows the war is over, everybody knows the good guys lost. And that is the message to the ground crew that none of these little limp dick uh, bliss ninnies. I call them the Carrie Cassidy crowd. If you know who the hell Carrie Cassidy is, I remember her. It might still be up on YouTube when uh, George came out with this little book and, and, and Carrie was, and I heard her interviewing George Green. Uh, you know, say it ain't so, George. And, and, and he goes, well, it, 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 you know, it's, it, it's the little P.S. they gave me. I, I, I'm just telling you what they told me. And none of these little bliss ninnies wanted to hear it. And, 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 and to this day, they are in complete denial, like my, my friend in, in, in Austin, <clears throat> who turned me on to these books, you know, claiming that this little... Uh, postscript uh, was bullshit, uh, that it was disinformation that we're fucked, uh, that, uh, that uh, I, I, I guess George Green uh, was lying uh, when, when he told Carrie, darling, uh, it, it, it is what it is. This is what these fucking space aliens told me, that we're fucked. Uh, that the human race and this planet are fucked. Deal with it. But, the, but these little limp dick, uh, and, 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 and this is what gets weird, it, 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 it is, is that these little limp dick, I, 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 bliss ninnies, but they're, they're not necessarily lefties. 
and, and what has happened in the intervening years, uh, so I guess during the 90s, what was created in uh, what may or may not be a cult was this, uh, I, I, I guess you would call them meetups, and there's chapters all over the country, probably all over the planet. There, they in Austin, Texas. Uh, they're and, and, and what they're called these meetings uh, based on the handbook for the new paradigm, which are still going on to this very day. They're called Circle of Intention, and it's gotten the whole circle of intention. It, it, it's kind of a weird bastard love child between the handbook for the new paradigm and you might uh, remember that movie The Secret uh, about the law of attraction and all of that. It, it's all mixed up together and so the, the, to, to this very day uh, these groups are still getting together uh, Maggie, I'm sure there's a circle of intention group in Pittsburgh. Not that I'm recommending you go to this. And, and the Austin chapter uh, was started and, and it is still run by, by this dirtbag named George Humphreys. George Humphreys, he, I think he was a former mayor of Austin. I, he was at least on the city council. I think that George Humphreys was mayor of Austin uh, years and years ago. The guy is an absolute fucking weirdo. I've been to parties at his house. Uh, he's this multi, multi-millionaire, lives in this, you know, big house with his sports cars and all kinds of shit out there uh, in, in, in the Northwest Hills uh, uh, of Austin. Uh, I am not a George Humphrey's favorite, favorite person. Needless to say, uh, the last time uh, I, I saw George was at one of his parties. I was the, uh, the harmonica player for the uh, Beatles cover band that he had hired to play one of his shindigs and he didn't realize that I uh, was the harp player in the band, and and I remember him sidling up to me, going, "Well, well, Hambone, you're you're one of the last people I expected to see here," and and I, and and I said, "George, I'm just a hired help. I'm the entertainment." I said, "Would you like me to leave?" Certainly not, Hambone. You are welcome in my home, and you, you know that kind of hypocritical bullshit. Uh, so, but George. Humphrey is one of these Alex Jones ass-licking toadies. Uh, and, and what has happened with the circle of intention, at least in Austin, and I don't know about the rest of uh, the, the country or the planet. Sandy, I will call you back soon. That is, shut up, girl! Anyway, uh, let, let, let me wrap this up. So what this circle of intention has devolved into is just this absolute bunch of raving right-wing Trump-tard conspiracy wackos. Uh, you know, all into Alex Jones and, and, and all of this crazy shit. Uh, they have completely uh, left behind. Uh, you know, I, I, I went to a couple of these. Uh, I went to a couple of, of these meetings, and it was. Uh, I, 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 I mean, it was it just fucking weird. And uh, I, this is I blame. The, the, these goddamn circle of intention meetings from turning my friend in, 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 into one of these conspiracy wacko uh, Trump tards that uh, I now 
again, George Green, uh, I think George Green died a few years ago. So, so I have no doubt that George Green, uh, the, the, the real George Green, and uh, not the space alien uh, channeling George Green, is also a right-wing Trump tard. But, but it's just, I, 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 I mean, it's just, at least in Austin, uh, the circle of intention it just completely cratered into this crazy right-wing conspiracy, uh, Donald Trump, ass-licking, toady, Trump-tard bunch of folks. I'm sure they're into the stolen election and, and all of this crap. The whole thing makes me want to puke. I have nothing to do on any level with the circle of intention. I, I am one of the few members of the ground crew who read every fucking word of those three books and, 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 and have the goddamn balls uh, to admit that the fourth book is the most important book of them all. That we're fucked. Okay? Make no, no doubt about it, but that does not mean there's not some good information uh, buried away in the handbook for the new Paradigm series. I do highly suggest Dulcinea and anybody else, I do think you should, uh, you should read this information and draw your own conclusions, but don't remember to, don't forget to read that fourth book. Uh, that were fucked. And so once again, the, the message in message to the ground crew, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. The war is over. The good guys lost. We are fucked. Get out there and enjoy it every day while you still can. That is the message to the ground crew and this planet that I have spent the last 15 years of my life bringing to the uh, uninitiated. Anyway, I realize I'm talking to myself and I have to go find out what's on Sandy's mind. <laughs> this morning. My guys. Dulcinea, would you call me, please? You promised you were going to call me. I love you. Bye, guys.